Yeah, welcome to Church on the Air. My name is Pastor Mrs. Edith Atake. We just had the word all over the Valentine feast they set aside to celebrate love. And um, since February the 14th, we have been bringing you a series of videos on the church perspective of love. First Corinthians chapter number 13 has the, a detailed definition of love. What is the definition of love? The Bible perspective. And this afternoon we want to say that God places much emphasis on love, on love. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13 makes us to understand that the most important virtue that we can ever have is that of love. The most important virtue is the virtue of love. I read 1 Corinthians 13 2. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 2. Though I have faith and have not love, I am nothing. Though I have faith and have not love, I am nothing. So we are being encouraged that we should seek the path of love. That love is the greatest virtue we can ever have. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 gives us three things that God rates very high. And that is faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. And the Bible says that the greatest of these is love. So we've been saying that the Bible perspective on love is that love is an everyday experience. That husbands and wives should not reserve it for just on Valentine's Day, but it should be an expression every day. That our relationships every day should be focused on love. Our everyday relationships with other, other people as well, our various interactions should also be of love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13, the greatest of three things that God ranks high ranking. Faith, hope, love, the greatest is love. Galatians 5, 6, he say, if we say we have faith, then we must walk it by love. Faith walk it by love. So we shall be examining the Bible perspective on love, bringing you different aspects. We have already brought you what the Bible means when he talks about love. And we said, first of all, that God is love. In our earlier video series, we said God is love. And for us to know God is to dwell and abide in God's love. We've also brought you a video clip that says that the greatest commandment is to love God. And the next greatest commandment is to love our neighbor as ourselves. This afternoon, we are letting you know that love should continue, that we should not stop. It doesn't start and end with February the 14th, no. But according to God's instruction, it is an everyday experience. We walk by love. In a very day, everyday interactions, we are to demonstrate and show love. Ephesians 3.17, Ephesians 3.17, all this was to be rooted and grounded in love. We'll be bringing you a video clip on hate versus love. And we are saying that the part of hate will not do it. Our nation now, we are at a crossroad at whether we should love one another and live as brothers and sisters or we are to carry the cutlass, the machete, or the AK-47, as we see on the various videos being displayed. But God is saying to us this afternoon that we should drop all of those and be grounded in love. Let love be our watchword. In all that we do and say, in our various activities, we should let love be our guiding principle. Ephesians 3.19 
says the love of Christ past sets knowledge. On February the 14th, we looked at the various ways in which, various ways in which man demonstrates love. And the conclusion was that <laughs> when the going is good, there is love. When it is not, there is not love. I told you one video clip I watched <laughs> where two ladies were talking and they were saying that ah, they are not going to succumb to any attempt of their various partners to bring a quarrel by this time. Why? Because they don't want to give them a gift. So if they don't want to give them gifts, they'll bring quarrel. They'll look for something to bring a quarrel or block their numbers. That's not the kind of love we are talking about. He said, the love of Christ passes knowledge. Why? Because God loves us. In a very poor state, he loves us. First John 4, 9. In this was manifested the love of God, that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we may live through him. So God's kind of love is very, very different from what you are experiencing. And we've said to our youth girls and boys, that the Valentine celebration was not for you. Please stay away so that you youth girls, you don't derail your destinies. If you get pregnant, you'll be the one to stay at home. The boy will continue his school. So we are saying leave it alone and embrace the love of Christ. Second Corinthians 8, 9. Though he, Jesus, was rich, yet for our sake he became poor, that we might be rich. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. Though he, Jesus, was rich, yet for our sake he became poor, that we might be rich. We are looking at the different kinds of love. And we are saying that love is the greatest virtue that we can ever have. And we said here that the love of Christ that passes all understanding is the love we should seek for. It's the love we should go for. Human beings will fail you. The husband may fail. The wife may fail. That boy may fail. That friend may fail. But there is somebody that can never fail you. And that person is found in the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus' love never fails. When he loves you, he loves you with an everlasting love. That even while we are yet sinners, he died for us. Revelation 2, 3 to 4. Revelation 2, 3 to 4. God is saying that we should give our lives over to him. We should seek his love and love him. In the letters to the various churches in Revelation 2, 3 to 4, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ speaking, he said, For my name's sake has thou labored. Those of us that have already given our lives to Jesus, he's saying that for some of us, he has something against us. And what is that? That we have lost our first love. So there is an altar call coming out now for this short video message, which is that the greatest virtue we should have is that of love. That love is God's good will and assignment for us, that we should be rooted and granted in love, Ephesians 3.17, that First Corinthians 13, 13, faith, hope, love, but the greatest of all this is love. So if you are out there and you do not yet know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we are saying to you that he is the best friend you can have and is the best relationship you can ever be in, the relationship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will never fail you. In Matthew 1, 28, Matthew 1, 28, Matthew 1, 18, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy landing, and I will give you rest. He's calling you and I to a complete rest. And for those of us that have already accepted him, he's saying, let's look at our relationship. In Revelation 2, 3 to 4 here, he says, Some of us have left our first love. Let's go back to that first love. The first love that we had that in the bus we were preaching, the first love that we had, that we had a burning desire for him, that we cannot hold our peace anywhere we are until we have spoken about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But now we are very quiet. 
Now we are very reserved. Now we are, we are feeling refined. But the truth of the matter is that that first love should continue. We are to born higher and higher and higher. Our love for Christ should not diminish, but it should increase day by day. That man will begin to identify us with Christ Jesus. That anywhere where they say, this one, leave him alone. She's <laughs> Mother Jesus. She's Mary. She's his pastor. He's this, he's that. Identifying you with Christ. And I would like to say too, that the corruption in death in our country is high because we have left, left our first love and there's so much compromising. We have been told this afternoon that let us not compromise. Let's go back to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His love is there for us. Ever, 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 ever faithful. He's the God of the first chance, the second chance, and the third chance. If you don't know him, you may repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sin. Have mercy on me. It's a simple prayer, but a loaded one. The church universal have started the Lenten period now where they will observe the stations of the cross. If you follow, you see that the methodology of this simple prayer is not easy. It's not an easy one at all. Christ went to the cross and died for you and for me. All we need to do is to accept that finished work on the cross of Calvary. And once we do, we enter into an everlasting love, a love relationship that we will forever be grateful for. Forever, we just keep saying thank you, thank you, thank you, because we begin to enjoy God's riches at Christ's expense. And if you already know him, but you backslid, you compromise, go back to the Lord in prayer. Tell him to ignite that fire in you, that fire in you that you not rest until you share the love of God with someone. That love of God that will make you that even when people offend you, you forgive them because the love of God is in your heart, encouraging you, urging you to forgive and to love no matter what. You may repeat after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sin, have mercy on me. Father, we lift up all those that are listening now and those that may yet listen. For generations to come, if you tarry, we ask, Lord God, that you touch every heart. We ask that you encourage. We ask that you strengthen. We ask that you have told us this afternoon that love is the greatest. Help us to pursue that part of love, to be relentless in it, to love you and to love our fellow human beings even as you have loved us. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May his containers of favor and of mercy never leave us all. We'll be bringing to you shortly our Twitter account. Ask Banner of Love. You may send your questions, comments, contributions to our Twitter account, Ask Banner of Love or to church on the air on a banner of love account on Facebook. On YouTube, we are also there. You'll find these short video clips available for you. We are on a series on the true perspective of the love celebration. And we are saying that the church does not celebrate as the world celebrates, but that we celebrate our God that is the God of love. And it's now showing us and teaching us how we can translate this love to our everyday experiences. In the next few minutes, we'll come up with another video. God bless you. Thank you very much for watching. God bless you. Thank you for streamlining.